Mini Review! Freeway was a 1981 release for the Atari 2600 by Activision. And while it doesn't answer why the chicken crossed the road, it does answer how. Because you made it. The goal is to get your chicken from the bottom of the screen to the top more times than your opponent in a set time frame. Dodging cars and trucks while you cross. The only controls here are up and down. Depending on what your difficulty switch is set to, getting hit by a car will either push you back a little bit or throw you back to your starting position. The game select switch changes the traffic in the playing field with a good variety of speeds and vehicles for better replayability. Once the timer finishes, the player with a higher number of crossings wins. Freeway is a fun multiplayer game in short bursts, but lacks the depth to really make it a go-to for the system. 5 out of 10. Mini Review! Frostbite was a 1983 release for the Atari 2600 by Activision. The goal is to build your igloo by jumping on the ice floes while dodging birds, clams, crabs, and polar bears. Grabbing fish gives you extra points. Jump around using your joystick. Each time you jump on a white ice floe, it turns blue and a new block is added to your igloo. Turn all the ice floes to blue and they'll revert back to white so that you can keep building. Pressing the button reverses the ice floe you're on but removes a block from your igloo. Once your igloo is finished, it'll get a door and you can run into it to complete the level. In the top left, you'll also see that there's temperature. This acts as your timer. If the temperature drops to zero, you lose. Frostbite is one of my favorite games for the 2600. Easy 10 out of 10. Mini review! Grand Prix was a 1982 release for the Atari 2600 by Activision. In Grand Prix, you race against other vehicles left to right with a top-down view. Try to maintain a high speed while dodging other cars, oil slicks, and walls. Press the button for gas, joystick to steer. Problem here being the size of the cars on the screen. They're so big that it's extremely difficult to maneuver without hitting, and when you get to speed, it's next to impossible. You're going to see your screen flash. A lot. The race ends when you reach the finish line, the goal being to get the lowest time. The game select switch changes the track. If the cars were half the size, this could have been a lot better. 3 out of 10. Mini Review Laser Blast was a 1981 release for the Atari 2600 by Activision. In Laser Blast, you're a flying saucer trying to destroy moving cannons on the ground. They come three at a time, destroy them while avoiding their laser shots, and you'll fly to the next batch and start all over again. Moving the joystick side to side moves your ships and guides your shots, which can shoot straight down or at an angle to either side. Pressing the button fires. If you're shot, your ship falls and you can guide it to destroy an enemy. If you're quick enough, you don't need to angle shots or dodge enemy blasts at all. Just move quickly across the screen and shoot down to destroy enemies before they even get a chance to retaliate. The game select switch changes the speed of movement and fire of your opponents. I liked this game a lot as a kid, but its lack of depth and variety means it gets repetitive really quick. 4 out of 10. Mini Review Missile Command was a 1981 port of the popular 1980 arcade game by Atari. Here, you're tasked with defending six cities from incoming missiles by intercepting them with missiles of your own. You guide a crosshair around the screen and press your button to fire. You have to lead the missiles in order to hit them. Thankfully, your missiles have a blast range, so you don't have to hit them dead on. If a missile gets through and hits one of your cities, it's destroyed. Lose all six cities and it's game over. You also have to protect your missile silo, because if it's destroyed, you won't be able to shoot and your cities will be left to the mercy of the enemy. That said, don't go nuts firing either, as you have limited shots. In later levels, planes and spread shots make things much more difficult. Missile Command is an absolute classic, and although it's way better with an analog trackball, it retains its fun with a joystick. 8 out of 10. Mini Review Plaque Attack was a 1983 release for the Atari 2600 by Activision. In Plaque Attack, you're a tube of toothpaste defending teeth from an onslaught of foods trying to rob them. These waves can vary from hamburger and hot dogs to fruit and candy. Food will come from both sides and move at different speeds and patterns as the game progresses. Once a piece of food touches a tooth, you'll have a brief moment to shoot the offender and save the tooth. As you shoot, your tube of toothpaste will shrink until you eventually run out of shots. If this happens, any remaining food in the wave has free reign to attack, so make your shots count. 
The game ends when you lose all your teeth. The joystick moves your toothpaste and the button shoots. The food can't hurt you, just the teeth. I'm certain that 9 out of 10 dentists approve of this game. Kind of a mashup between Space Invaders and Missile Command, this is a surprisingly fun game. 8 out of 10. Mini Review! River Raid was a 1982 release by Activision for the Atari 2600. Programmed by acclaimed programmer Carol Shaw, River Raid is a vertical shooter that has you as a fighter jet behind enemy lines. The river you navigate must be in a canyon because if you fly over the banks of the river, you crash. Left and right moves you, up and down makes you go faster or slower, and the button shoots. Dodge and shoot enemies while avoiding the banks. But wait, that's not all. You also have a fuel gauge that slowly ticks down. So be careful not to shoot everything, as when you see a fuel refill point, you'll want to pick it up instead of destroying it. River Raid was a landmark for the shooter genre, and holds up as fun today. 8 out of 10. Mini Review! Sequest was a 1983 release for the Atari 2600 by Activision. In Sequest, you're a submarine tasked with saving divers while dodging enemy submarines and hungry sharks. The goal is to load up your sub with six divers and surface with them, advancing you to the next stage. You have an oxygen meter that you have to keep an eye on. If it runs out, your sub will explode. You can surface to refill your oxygen tanks, but if you do so, you will lose a diver. If you surface without a diver, your sub explodes. In later stages, there's a patrol sub on the top that will move towards you when you surface. So be sure to be as far as possible from it when you go up, since you can't resubmerge until you've completely replenished your oxygen. The joystick moves your sub, the button shoots. This is exactly the kind of game that the 2600 is perfect for. Great fun. 9 out of 10. Mini Review! Skyjinx was a 1982 release for the Atari 2600 by Activision. In Skyjinx, you're racing a plane through a slalom course. Fly to the left of blue pylons, fly to the right of red pylons. Do this while avoiding trees and hot air balloons. Once you pass the set amount of pylons, your plane lands and you can start over again, trying to get the best time. The joystick moves you side to side, and the button gives you a speed boost. The game select switch changes the course, and each course has a different pattern and length, including a randomly generated course option. This game looks great, it's colorful, and being able to fly under clouds is a nice touch. Although looking great, the gameplay itself is lackluster, and it doesn't hold your attention for more than a game or two. 5 out of 10. It's a mini review! Space Invaders was a 1980 release for the Atari 2600. Considered to be the first killer app video game for any home console, Space Invaders is a home port of the popular 1978 arcade game. The goal is simple, eliminate waves of aliens without being shot or allowing them to reach the ground. Aliens move in formation side to side, and when they reach the end of the screen they move down a row. The more of them you destroy, the faster they get, until the last remaining invader blazes across the screen. The game starts pretty tame, with the aliens high up and three shields above you to protect from enemy shots. Later levels start the aliens lower and lower, until eventually they start so low that your shields disappear. Game modes include multiplayer, moving shields, zigzag and fast shots, and invisible aliens. Space Invaders is an absolute classic for the 2600, that although it may be overshadowed by games later in the library, still maintains its place as one of the system's best. 8 out of 10. Mini Review! Berserk was a 1982 release for the Atari 2600. A classic for the console, Berserk is a home port of the 1980 arcade game. In this game, you're a lone human running through a labyrinth filled with deadly robots. Move through the rooms shooting robots while dodging their shots and making sure to avoid touching anything including walls and the robots themselves. If you hang around in a room too long, Evil Otto comes and chases you out. He's invincible, so if you see him, just run. Game modes include a vulnerable or even no Evil Auto, robots shooting or not shooting, and different points values for extra lives. Berserk is a great game to pop in for short bursts. 7 out of 10. Hey, a mini review. 
Crackpots was a 1983 release by Activision for the Atari 2600. In Crackpots, you're a Brooklyn gardener working to keep bugs from getting into the windows of your building. You do this by moving to one of six pots and pressing the button to drop them. If it hits a bug, it eliminates it. Each level contains four waves of bugs that become more difficult in their movement with each wave. As each level progresses, the bugs get faster. If six or more bugs get into your windows, a section of your wall will be eating away, making it shorter, and you will have to restart the level. Keep playing until your building crumbles to the ground. Crackpots is a fun game that would have been made better if it used the paddle. But then, it would likely be too easy, and it's really not a hard game. Six out of ten. Mini Review Dolphin was a 1983 release by Activision for the Atari 2600. Here you play as a dolphin swimming for its life in its race to escape a pursuing giant squid. In your way are columns of seahorses that will slow you down, as well as currents represented by arrows. You have two standard abilities to help you. First, you can move in any direction. Use this to take advantage of the currents, as if you swim against them they slow you, but if you can swim with them, you'll speed up. Second is your sonar. It can be hard to find where the gap is in the walls, but if you listen to the tone of your sonar sounds, they indicate where the gap will be. High pitch is close to the surface, low pitch is deeper. Every once in a while, you'll see a seagull above the water. If you can jump and touch it, you'll have a short time of invincibility. Touch the squid in this state, and you'll drive him off. Dolphin is great fun that holds up today. 9 out of 10. Mini Review Dragster was a 1980 release for the Atari 2600 by Activision. The goal is to get your car from start to finish as quickly as possible while cycling through four gears. Press the action button for gas, tap and release the joystick to the left to shift. That's it. If you do it right, each round only takes a matter of seconds. It's an interesting concept, but lacks any real replayability aside from can you do it faster, and after about five minutes it gets old. Nowadays, this game is only really known for the controversy surrounding the world record time that was later found to be impossible to achieve, opening a lot of questions about past records, and honestly, that's fine. If you don't have Dragster, you're not missing much. 3 out of 10.